The cruise ship floating off the California coast with 21 coronavirus patients on board will dock later today in Oakland, California. Anyone who tested positive will immediately disembark and then head to the hospital for treatment. All right, the other 3,500 people on board will go to military posts in California, in Texas, and Georgia for testing and a 14-day quarantine. The process is expected to last several days. So let's bring in Stephanie Grisham, White House Press Secretary, Communications uh, Director. Stephanie, are you comfortable with these with these moves, or is the or, or or is the federal government asked to be comfortable with California's moves? <laughs> Good morning. Uh, yeah. We've been working really hard. The task force led by Vice President Pence, of course, has been working really hard with state and local officials. So, you know, we're going to get that ship. Um, we're working hard to get that ship home. And as you said, we want to get the most vulnerable off first and, and everybody into quarantine and tested as appropriate. We heard uh, some of the news from the task force over the weekend was like, you know, if you're older, maybe you shouldn't think about going on a cruise, things like that. How close is the federal government to having actual travel warnings regarding, you know, at what age should you not fly on an airplane if you've got an underlying condition? At what age should you consider not taking a cruise? Things like that. Well, the task force is meeting every single day, and they have been giving daily briefings. The president is briefed every day, of course. Right now, we're just we're telling people to act as if this is a severe flu season and, you know, wash your hands often. And if you are elderly or if you have any ailments, you know, underlying health issues, maybe don't go to areas where there's big crowds. If you do start to feel sick, stay home. Don't go to work. Uh, stay out of that. Right now, those are the... the uh, warnings that we're giving people and then we'll go from there. We'll see what happens as this continues. Yes. Stephanie, when, when Bernie was on, on Meet the Press over the weekend, Chuck Todd asked him if he was going to continue to be on the campaign trail because we're, we keep hearing if you're around 80 years old, you're susceptible. And uh, he is 78 years old. President Trump is 73. Will he continue to have rallies and be out there on the campaign trail? He actually just addressed this. Yes, he plans on still holding rallies. And I'll tell you what, with our president, this man who doesn't sleep and who I have seen work 15, 16 hours a day every day, I have no problem thinking that he's going to be just fine and just healthy. Yeah. Well, well, what about the fact that apparently there was a guy at CPAC and he tested positively and he apparently shook hands with Ted Cruz? Uh, and Ted Cruz is now going into self-quarantine for a full 14 days. Apparently he shook hands with Matt Schlapp and Matt Schlapp shook hands with the president. Is the president a little freaked out about that? No, not at all. Again, this is something that is like a flu. And so people are taking the, the appropriate precautions. The president of the United States, as we all know, is a uh, quite a hand washer. He uses hand sanitizer mm -hmm. all the time. So he's not concerned about this at all. I know Ted Cruz and I know uh, Congressman Gosar are both doing self-quarantine. You know, you don't know who each individual person is around all of the time. Right. So perhaps they've got constituents yeah. who are a little bit older, etc. So I think that's why they're making those uh, those responsible choices. So uh, Connecticut Senator uh, Murphy is the new Adam Schiff. Uh, he goes on all the shows and just plays politics. And here's an example. Uh, he goes, we have a president who is lying to the American people that the vaccine was two months away uh, and that everybody could get a test if they wanted a test. Uh, he has to be straight with the American people. He's making everything worse. What's your reaction to that? You know, I've said this before. The president said this before as well. I just want to stress to politicians and the media to stop using this as a tool to politicize things and to scare people. It's not responsible. This is not the time for this. People need to be looking to the CDC for guidance. People need to be, again, washing their hands, treating this like a flu, making responsible choices. This is absolutely not the time to be trying to scare people to gain political points or to get headlines. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, in the last year, a lot of Americans have heard more about FISA, the uh, foreign uh, intel surveillance court where ultimately it was used to spy on the Trump campaign. Now it looks as if uh, certain provisions of the FISA law are going to expire unless there's a let's make a deal moment in Congress. What does the president want and how close is a deal? Well, I'm not going to get ahead of how close we are with a deal, but the president has said time and again, and I couldn't agree more, that this should never happen to any candidate ever again, any president ever again. There have been FISA court judges who have come out publicly saying that those warrants should have never been done. So I think that the president is looking for a bipartisan effort to try and stop that from happening. So is he closer? Because Democrats just say leave it. 
Uh, and Lindsey Graham so that wants some uh, wants to continue it but wants some changes. We know we've had a lot of people on here from Mark Meadows, your new chief of staff, on down saying they want some changes. Is there a sense the president wants to scrap it all together? No, I think, again, I think the president wants a bipartisan effort here. I think that there's definitely some changes that absolutely need to be made. And I think once he feels satisfied that what happened to him and what happened to his campaign will not happen to another president or, uh, or nominee, and I would say Democrat or Republican, then I think that we'll move forward. All right, Hillary uh, has been interviewed a lot lately, and then there's that Hulu documentary on her four-part series. She was also interviewed on CNN. Listen to what she said about women and the double standard. The double standard, particularly in public life, and not only in political public life, but business life, uh, the life of the media and the arts and so much else. Yes, there is some absolute misogyny that certainly lives online, but there still is something inside that when a woman says, wait a minute, I'd like to lead. I'd like to be in charge. I'd like to be your president or your chief executive or whatever it might be. Little alarm bells, little unconscious alarm bells start to ring. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. And I think that actually she's minimizing women with those comments. You know, actually under this president, women are doing better than ever, especially with jobs. And I would say just personally at the White House, he's got so many women in leadership at the White House. Women are doing great. And I, I think that to play that card and to publicize that card actually minimizes women and does the opposite effect of what I think she was trying to do. So the president of the United States is going to not attend a St. Patrick's Day lunch uh, and it's the first time a president hasn't attended, I think, in decades, really because of the presence of Nancy Pelosi. And if I could paraphrase, uh, she basically, he basically thinks she's been dividing the country. Um, is, it, is it worth missing an event uh, because of Nancy Pelosi's presence? Yeah, I think that I think that right now he's got a lot of work to do. He's got uh, briefings on the coronavirus. We'll be doing our own thing at the White House for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I think it's exactly true. We don't need to deal with any more of her, you know, little games and her little ripping up of paper. Who knows what she's got planned for this? And that's not what the country should be focused on is, is her games and her politics. So the president's going to stay at the White House and work on behalf of the American people. Okay, so he won't be attending the uh, speaker's lunch. Uh, her deputy chief of staff put out a statement and said there's never been stronger support in the Congress and in the country for the U.S.-Ireland bilateral relationship. One would think that the White House could set petty partisan politics aside for this historic occasion. What do you think of that? I find that to be laughable, absolutely laughable. And his not attending a lunch does not mean that anything with, uh, with Northern Ireland is uh, anything less than great. All right. Very good. Stephanie Grisham joined us today from West Palm Beach down in Florida with the president. Stephanie, thank you Thanks, very much. Stephanie.